Hey guys, it's George here, and in this quick tutorial, I'd like to show you how you can mix Phoenix simulators and V-Ray environment fog. And on top of that, I have another quick tip on how you can use empty Phoenix simulators and V-Ray volume grids in order to emulate the effect of the environment fog. So without further ado, let's dig in. I have this uh, scene in Max, that is this uh, campfire in the desert or on the beach, depending on how you look at it. So let's do a quick render and see what we start with. So this is um, how our scene looks. And what's missing is a bit of fog to improve the atmosphere or add some more a uh, moody element to it. So let's stop the render for now and let's save this frame as a reference and let's start. I'll go to the rendering menu and go under the environment. In here uh, for the atmosphere, we can add the V-Ray environment fog. And actually, let's start IPR. And this will allow us to set our fog um, interactively. You can see that our fog showed up, but it's way too low. So uh, we can go and increase the fog height. So let's try something like 10. And immediately you can see that everything turned black except for our file. And this is not exactly the effect that we are after. So uh, let's go and adjust our fog settings first. And then we can see what we can do about the fire. So um, I can go in here and increase our fog distance. And the higher I go, uh, the more of our scene will start to turn visible. So we can see that. 10 is not quite enough, so let's try 15, okay, better, let's go to 20, and probably our fog is way too high, so let's try something like 5 for the height, and yeah, looks much, much better now, okay, but um, if I go in here and press the AB button. It will allow us to compare uh, with our reference frame. We can see that uh, the environment uh, changed and the lighting is affected by the fog, but our fire is with the exact same intensity that it was without the fog. So what's the deal with it and how we can fix it? Let's disable the comparison for now, and I will disable IPR. If we go in here um, for the atmosphere, you can see that uh, we have Phoenix FD and the Vue environment fog. And in this case, um, the Phoenix simulation will be rendered and treated as an atmospheric. And when we have two atmospherics, such as the Phoenix and the environment fog, they won't blend properly. And the solution for this is to render uh, our fire as geometry. So the way to do it is we can go and select our fire simulator, go um, into the rendering route, and we can change our mode to volumetric geometry. So what this will do is it will create many, many tiny slices of um, geometries and it will assign our uh, fire effect over them and now if we select this so that we can have it as a reference and do another render we'll get this and now our fire looks way, way better and blends much better with the environment. And we can see that it has lots 
more detail um, in it. And essentially, that's it. Uh, this is how you use uh, Phoenix simulations and V-Ray environment for. But wait, if it looks better, why don't we have it enabled by default? So the deal is that the volumetric geometry mode is slow. In this case, our um, simulation is relatively small and with low resolution. If I go uh, under my simulation, we can see that it's just below 2 million cells. That's quite low. And this is why it renders relatively fast. But if you, if you have a higher res simulation and a larger cache, it will render a lot slower in geometry mode. But can we do it so that it renders a bit faster with a higher resolution caches? Yes. Let's see how we can emulate the effect of the VRA environment fog by using an empty simulator. Yes, it will be empty. Let's go first into the rendering route and go and delete our environment fog and get back in here and switch back to volumetric rendering mode. And if we start a render, we can see that we get back to ground zero and our starting point. Okay, so let's stop this and hide our fire uh, for the time being. And I can go into the Phoenix toolbar and create a fire simulator like so. So actually, let's make it a bit smaller so I can go under my grid rollout and make it smaller like this. So let's try something like this, for example. And let's show our V-Ray frame buffer and start IPR so that we can see what's going on. And let's go and open the volumetric options for um, our empty simulator. And let's go to the smoke opacity route. In here, change the based on option to smoke. And this will unlock this curve that would allow us to change the opacity. And if I select the first point in here and set it to something like 0 0.1, you can see that our simulator immediately filled with smoke. And if I go in here and change the perspective view, we can rotate our camera and we can see um, how our simulator looks like. And but currently it's all black and this is because um, our smoke color is way too dark. So what I can do is go in here and change this to white and you can immediately see that it became a lot brighter. And currently, uh, it's dark because our uh, scene lighting is too dark. But if we go and increase the exposure, you can see that uh, it looks much, much better. But if we take a look closer at our smoke, we can see that it has this nasty splotchy noise. So what's the deal with it? Um, by default, uh, for the small color, we have this option enabled, which is called volume light cache. And what it does, it allows us to speed up rendering, but it tends to produce this nasty noise. So a way to reduce the noise is just go disable the volume light cache and immediately uh, it will start to look much better. But in some scenes, this will render quite a lot slow. So instead of disabling completely, what we can do is go in here and set it to 0 0.2, for example, and we can see that it renders relatively faster, but without this splotchy noise. Sometimes setting it to a lower value won't help and you'll have to disable this completely. 
So you need to experiment uh, what works best for your scene. So let's enable it and set it back to 0 0.9. And let's delete this exposure in here. And how do we adjust the opacity? So if we go back uh, to our curves in here and our first curve point, if we go in here and set it to 0 0.02, you can see that it becomes more transparent. And if we go even lower, you can see that it becomes more and more transparent. And we can go even lower, and you can see that it's barely visible now. So a cool thing that you can do with this is let's make it solid again is that you can modify this with textures. So what I can do is click on the modulate checkbox and this will unlock the texture slot. So let's click on it and type noise and let's create a noise texture. So if I go into my material editor and I can go and drag this texture like so, and actually let's start back IPR so that we can see what's going on. And we can adjust our texture settings. So if I go and increase my low now and decrease and we can see um, our texture, like so. And we can even set this to 200. And you can see how this looks. In this case, I think that the volume light cache might be slowing us down. So let's try disabling it. Actually, uh, for some scenes, disabling the volume light cache will be faster. So as you can see, this, I have disabled the volume light cache and now the scene renders much, much faster. So in some scenes, uh, it really helps with the render speed and in others, it doesn't. So it's best to experiment uh, on a scene basis to check uh, if your scene looks faster with it or it's slower. So <clears throat> in here, if I go under the IPR and we can change the settings and you can see that we get this variation. And this way, adding a texture it's a nice way to add more detail and more variation to your um, render results. So let's disable this and let's get back to our original setup. So I will stop my rendering and let's go to our camera one and enable back our fire. And we can see that now uh, our empty simulator is really, really small. So let's go back and increase the size in here. And we can actually go back into perspective mode and make it cover much, much larger area and even affect our camera so that it emulates a bit uh, what we have with the environment for. So I can extend this quite a lot. So let's try something like this. And if we decrease our grid resolution, it will allow us to expand the size even more. So 
I think this is fine for the time being. So let's go back um, to our camera. And let's do a quick render and see how this looks. Okay, it's way, way too dense now. So uh, what we can do, okay, let's start back IPR and we can dial in our curve. So let's go back and let's try 0 0.02. Okay, still way too dark. So 0 0.01 and now we're in the game and it looks much, much better. Now you can see that it's a bit slower. So uh, what we can do, let's try and enable the volume light cache again. And now it's faster again. Okay. And if we want to make uh, the opacity even lower, you can see that we're already at 0 0.001. And if I try to add another zero, like so, it will make us this really nice and environment foggy effect. But as you can see uh, in here, we have a few splotches and these are coming from the volume light cache. So volume light cache can be your friend or can be your enemy, depending on the case. So we can go and adjust it to 0 0.2, for example, and we get bit cleaner result, but as you can see, it's a tiny tad slower. So this is it. So this is how you can use empty simulators uh, to emulate the effect of the Vira environment fog. And of course, this will work exactly the same way with an empty V-Ray volume grid. So I hope this was useful and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.